Hello, 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 and welcome to the stream, Floating Polly. Uh, my name is Dr. Heatsink, and we're going to be going over some more uh, progression on this project I've got. Uh, the project is for uh, a fan art piece for Sakuya Izioi. Um, you may know her from Toho Luna Nights or from the Toho series in general. Uh, okay, so what I've got here is basically some pre visualization. Uh, and what that basically is, is just some idea as to what I want the final render to look like. So the pose, uh, maybe expression, and just some fairly basic things. Um, I've got the rig done to a like base state where we can actually try and determine that. And that's what I've got here right now. So uh, let's just have a quick look. So as you can see... Like all of these uh, controls, let me just get my layers back on, get my control layer back off reference mode. So I've got all of these controls uh, set up to uh, pose this character. Right, we've even got uh, the ribbon trails moving based on this uh, bunch of controllers here. So I can actually just move these around to create the curves that I want. The only problem with it, if you can call it a problem, is that the uh, like if you move the end point because of the way that it's parented, you have to move the end first, then the middle, and then the middle of those two if you want to edit the curve. Uh, that's just the way that the parenting works with that. But that's uh, you know that's totally fine. Just for my purposes, that will work. Um, the way that I've got this uh, skirt to move as well, and the hair, is that I've just cheated it with some soft selection. Since it's just pre-visualization, um, I'm not too fussed about that right now. Uh, but we're going to, you know, properly bind it to uh, the bones uh, at some point this week, basically. That's the goal, to try and get this fully, fully finished. Um, so that instead of being like proxy geometry that's all broken up like this, it will actually be fully bound. Of course, that's a lot of work, so... Uh, wish me luck with that, but um, to go over a few things I think that uh, weren't necessarily covered last week, like what changed. So uh, apart from this new uh, ribbon trail, there have been a lot of changes to the arms and stuff, like the uh, way that the forward kinematic and the inverse kinematic work. Uh, sure, there should be a control here. Yep. And if I just go ahead and switch that over whoops not like that because the control hasn't been moved but but the ik and the fk work there's another file over here um just just off like just underneath this one where like there's an actual change but the original alignment for the joints here i thought this was a little bit too low for the uh joint so if i move over to the uh more final one over here right i've gone and moved the arm uh joints upwards a bit more and the shoulder joint a bit more uh a bit upwards uh i've moved it up more <laughs> is what i mean to say right so that way i'm what i'm hoping is that when i go to rotate it say above uh her, her head or something like that it's gonna be a little less uh restrictive so Right, and put that back on like the FK mode. And if I were to go ahead and rotate it like upwards, it should reach a lot further. It still doesn't quite reach as far maybe as it should, uh, but that is based on you know the proportion of the character and how big say the head is. But this is a lot more, sorry, a much wider range of movement than she had before. So that I think is uh, much better. So. Um, with regards to this pre-visualization then, um, I'm thinking that's the pose that I'm going to go with. There might be some more poses uh, that we might do, but uh, this is essentially what we're going to aim for. So, uh, what else did I have? Oh yeah, we've got an eye target control, and that has been fixed. Uh, there was an issue where the eyes were not rotating uh, properly, where they would... The actual, like, iris would rotate. Uh, that's been fixed now just by uh, 
making sure that the x-axis wasn't constrained to it. So now they don't rotate in that direction at all, and they just uh, they just rotate in the y and z directions. So now, even if, for instance, we rotated the head this way, they still remain uh, directionally uh, towards the uh, you know this control. So basically, what I'm saying is that they point in the correct direction. Um, We've also got a control here where we zero that. You see how this has got like two circles in here? So these two are the individual um, eye uh, pointers. So if I wanted to only move one eye for whatever reason, I could do that. And this is also like, if this is just basically where the eyes look straight ahead. So if I move the control closer, they see that they don't focus on the actual control. But if I uh, manipulate this converge eyes uh, attribute that I've made, right, I can now make them focus on the actual eye control, which of course results in a cross-eyed effect if the object is too close, which happens in real life. Um, if, you know, you, you get your object like really, really close to your eyes, you notice that your eyes actually do turn towards that. Um, so, yes. It's just a, a neat little fixture that I thought was quite easy to do. So, anyways, so about what we're actually going to do today then, um, what I want to do is, we just show all the joints, what I want to do is that I want to go ahead and make sure that all of this stuff has some kind of uh, either rig or approach to it that I can use to get this character uh, posed in time, I think, for maybe either next Wednesday or next Saturday. Basically, what I'm trying to do is really push to, to get this started to getting, you know, into Marmoset for presentation. Um, that way we can review the presentation and lighting and all that important stuff uh, in time for, um, I think, the rookies in particular. Yeah, we really want to try and be able to submit for that. So, oh, there's one more control I've got here as well. So this is new. Uh, this is a control for the apron right now. And if I move this uh, object, it will manipulate the apron. I'll just take the bones away. It's a little easier to see. So if I move it right, it moves to the right. If I move it left, it moves to the left. And if I move it up, it banks upwards. If I back move it down, it doesn't do anything. Um, right now, I don't think I want it to uh, just yet. But there might be something where I get it to like curve outwards if I move it down uh, perhaps but for now this sort of like analog stick kind of thing uh, just controls like a really basic sort of uh, way that the apron sways so that's that okay so let's move on to some actual work and let's uh, make a start here so what I was doing yesterday is that I'm beginning this process of uh, adding more controls onto uh, various parts so over here, right, so this is some stuff I can actually demonstrate now that I know a bit more about uh, the way this all works. So over here, I've got this control, and it's linked to this uh, set of bones that are going to control this uh, ribbon. And if I just unreference my own proxy geometry, I think. I think this is proxy geometry. I hope it is. If I just have a look for it. Yeah, best big ribbon. Yep, this is definitely in the proxy geometry, so I'm not going to mess up my uh, normal uh, geometry that I intend to actually bind. So I guess we can do like a sort of demo in terms of proxy geometry and, you know, hopefully say like why this is kind of useful, particularly with this uh, rig development. I'm just going to check. Yep, this object also exists in my normal uh, geometry group, so I know that I'm not uh, gonna mess anything up when I uh, go to edit this because I'm gonna basically be I'm either just gonna bind it straight up I think I might just bind it straight up to this uh, bone no I won't because these two are different right so we're not gonna be doing that I think uh, because I think they need a root uh, and I don't think I've got that like that here. no no I don't so okay the easiest way to make this uh, super easy on me 
Oops, not doing that. So I'm going to just isolate this. And I want to divide this in half. So it's literally a case of just, you know, yeah, take it in half and extract it out. But what I want to do uh, is just soft select. Sorry, like, I want uh, to soft bind these joints onto this just so that I've got uh, a really quick and easy way of being able to just manipulate this without me having to break this up into several pi uh, pieces of geometry. I think it's just easier. So let's go ahead and just soft bind this. So I'm hoping this isn't going to like crash my own. It shouldn't, but we'll just see. So I think it's this way and then this way. And go to rigging, skin, find skin. Right. We don't want the geodesic voxel. We want the heat map, I think. Uh, classic linear. I've learned some about a little bit about the dual quaternion uh, bind, it's like skinning method. Um, to make that kind of simple, we're not going to use that because I don't think it's supported in Unreal 4. Even though we're not using Unreal 4 to render this, what I'm trying to get at is that I want um, every like skinning job that I do, it should be compatible with a game engine. So if dual quaternion uh, binding isn't going to be compatible with UE4, then it's likely that it's not going to be compatible with many others. And from what I understand, Dual Quaternion literally has two weight maps, uh, in, you know, so one in addition to the normal uh, weight binding that you get. So interactive just says, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Include hidden sections. Heat map fall off 0.68. Yeah, that's probably all right. All right. So if we just bind this, it shouldn't take too much. He says, yep, yeah, okay, good. It didn't crash the stream. That's a good sign. Now, if we unhide that, and we're just going to isolate to this. So all we've got is just the control and the bones. Now, I just want to see whether... Oops, not that control. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> right, this one, this one, and the bones, just so I can see that. Right, so now if I move this round, obviously you're going to get some issues here um, where that's moving. We, you know, that's fine. We're not interested in that. We just want to see that the control is behaving like, so this bit is what we're interested in. This uh, section of geometry here, we would just bind to root so it wouldn't move. But we can see that if we move the uh, control around, hopefully, we can get it to like curve the other way. It may be that it needs another control. In which case, I don't mind giving it to it. Because I'm just thinking about how I would uh, pose it. So it can pose like to curve like this, which is good. I can curve it that way. Which definitely uh, helps, so that's fine. So it may be that this is enough. Just for reference, I just want to grab some more geometry here when I go to do this, right? Just It's just so that I can see by comparison like what I'm doing. Okay. And then if I rotate it like this. And then I kind of have to manipulate it by moving it closer and moving it further away. I think it will do for now. Um, but what I think I would do if I was if this was a bit longer or uh, if I have more time is that uh, the clusters here that control these two. Oh, actually, maybe it is worth doing. Maybe it is, but these two clusters here can't really select them. Uh, take that. Okay. Yeah, these two over here would probably be controlled by another control that uh, lets me move them around. Probably wouldn't be too difficult to create, but I think that what would be what would be the most important thing right now is to get everything kind of as a whole done to a minimum and then build it all up uh, if there's more time to do that. But for now, in terms of like basic posing, right, this is fine, right, and obviously we can wait paint it further if we really need to, but this is probably okay if we rotate it more like that. Yep. So. That's fine. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So 
bone reference my proxy geometry. Go ahead and grab that and that. I want to skin the exact same way. And if I move my control, it should behave pretty much in the exact same way. Not quite. Uh, it's gone and taken something else there. That's a little strange. Righty, so why is that happening? Has, have I made a bad parent somewhere? Uh, that should not... Did I find something weird there? Oh? Oh, whoops, how about that? So, I'm just going to undo back to when I uh, didn't find it. Ooh, okay. Then big weapon here. That's a bit weird. Must be like a cluster that's been uh, set up incorrectly. Let me just go and select it. Yeah. Where's my cluster? Oh. Let's have a look. What's this here? Draw back ribbons, start. I'm gonna start here. It's a bit strange as far as I can tell, there's nothing there that's changing that. Um let's see. Go and find these two. Sadly though, um when you press F in the outline list, sometimes it doesn't quite find the object, so you have to like look for it. Ah, here we go, right, okay. Ah, uh, the parent constraint for this, maybe? Big ribbon on RW is bound to what? Let's just delete that for now. Maybe it's not necessary. And if it is a problem, we'll just uh, work on that again later. Oops. Right, okay. Because I have a feeling that had something to do with it. Right, so now that we've got that. Here. Oh yeah, the joints are filtered out. There we go. Alright, find again. There we go. There must have been some weird parenting going on. And I think like these controllers have been uh, parented back. No, they're not. That's a bit weird. But whatever. So that bit works now. This bit, all fine. I can bend it and shape it as I wish. That's fine. So there should be an issue now where when I rotate the uh, like the controller here, like the uh, bow doesn't move with it. That's because the, the uh, controls haven't been bound to join with, uh, sorry, been parented to this uh, back control. So they need to go there. Simple enough. So all of this is part of this control back ribbon object. And what I'm understanding about this uh, rigging mentality is that this master skeleton compo is basically composed of multiple parts. So I would just sort of minimize a lot of this, right? But I may have covered like this before, um, but I feel like I'm very certain now in that every um component in this master skeleton is joined by a parent constraint rather than just joining it straight onto roots uh because it's meant to be quite modular so like this neck ribbon part here for instance you wouldn't expect that on every character not every character is going to have a ribbon shaped like this right so you know you're you would uh make this separate from the rest of it so that the rest of the skeleton could be you know recycled for another character right and i presume that you would use something like human ik or something like that uh for even more like control of that but you know for what we're just going for here which is just character posing this is fine but yeah you see how like everything here doesn't like just inst just go underneath this root even though you would expect that and for game the actual game skeleton they all would be under a real root hierarchy like a single hierarchy um so 
All right, so this control that we've made here, let's check what curve one and two are before I uh, check that. Ah, yeah, this is the curve that controls this IK uh, spline. So I'm just going to make sure that that's been named correctly. Uh, curve underscore uh, IK spline, right? And then uh, back ribbon. L, right? So I'll just capitalize that while I'm there. I'm just going to check that that is definitely that. Yep. Oh, whoops. Thank you. All right. So these two curves can might as well just go under here. So they're all organized under this like group uh, here. The clusters will need to go in their own separate group. Uh, yeah. Cluster group, uh, back ribbon. That'll do. There's a particular weird relationship that clusters have when they're uh, grouped. So we'll find uh, how that exactly works when we go to uh, parent them all back in. So when we go, we're just uh, cleaning this uh, off now. So control center mass. So this uh, controls things like the way that the top body faces, including the pelvic, uh, the pelvic area, and also things like to being able to sit down for instance obviously this isn't bound back to uh the head joint so it's going to move around when this moves around that's fine uh we're gonna work on that and find it today basically all right so control back ribbon can go underneath control center mass right so now when i rotate this right, we get the ribbon uh moving but you'll notice that the ribbon uh, is doing what is called double transform. So right now the ribbon is being amplified by something else. And what that actually is, is these clusters. So the clusters also have to go underneath, I think, here. Right, so they, just like how the cluster uh, group spine is here, the cluster group for this back ribbon is also in here. So let's try rotating that again and see if we still have that problem. And as you can see, no, we don't. Wonderful. <laughs> so... Awesome stuff. Right. So that fixes that part. Now what I think uh, would be nice to be able to do on stream today would be to start doing some very basic sort of uh, hair controlling. So base, I've... Oh, one thing I've done, actually, is that I've simplified this uh, skeletal, skeletal structure a lot more. Uh, and that's just simply because I looked at this uh, when it was on Sakia, I think. I think I sh if I show the joints, it might be easier. And then find the hair joints somewhere. Presumably it'll be here. Look for it. Yep, here we are. And you'll see that uh, if we... Oh. Oh. I doesn't want to isolate to it. Alright, then fine. <laughs> we have ways. Uh, shift P because it's just too big. Now if I isolate, nope. How weird. Can't isolate to it. Oh, well, if I isolate to it, it doesn't quite behave the way I expect it to. Feel like it's not showing. Okay, whatever. But the point being is, you see the mess of absolute bone, um, just craziness going on there. I'll just hide the geometry as well, right? Like, and that's one hair strand, like, this is all like one hair piece of one piece of hair geometry and it's branching off into three and i looked at that and i just thought that's just too complicated okay way too complicated so i took the time to just simplify it down and if i look at this one this part here which is going to be controlled by just checking i have aimed correctly yep this part so you see how it's just so much simpler now one two three Four, five, six, seven, and these three are going to control this lot as a uh, a whole, rather than trying to individualize it. It's just too. I just thought it's too much. Um, you know, we've got enough variety there as it is. I think we don't quite need to spend like that crazy amount of time trying to individually uh, paint a whole bunch of like pieces like that. That's what I thought. So, all right. So controls for this slot it's what i've found is that it's quite simple 
uh, which is good. I'm just going to check that everything else is all fine and dandy. Uh, this new thing here that as well, as well I've got. So this part, this control that is outside all of these other controls, and then is parented to this um, over encapsulating like uh, group here. This is actually just a super easy way of getting the scale control and the uh, movement control working. Although I can see there's a double transform happening here, which I presume is down to uh, clusters. Let's just see. Okay, so it doesn't do it there, but it does do it under global scale. Right, okay. So this means that, yep, yeah, back ribbon here needs to not uh, be controlled in that way. So this curve, I guess, flying here presumably needs to come out. So if I just move it out and see what happens. Oops, not that one. Move that a little further. There you go. Curve, okay, spline. I'm just going to check where the spine control is as well and just check that there's no other weird things. We get clusters. All the clusters on this one is relative. So this one should also have relative clusters. They do. Okay. So now I just need to work out why uh, that happens with that. It may be due to these IK trails, like these uh, splines here, but no, that seems like that should be fine. Ah, oh, joy. When I move this control, right, it seems perfectly fine. When I move this, in fact, if I scale this, does it? mess with that? Yes, it does. Right, okay. Ooh, rigging is like a puzzle. <laughs> okay. So, spine is here, and... All of the spine controls are here, but they're individual. Right, okay. I think that's probably why. And the start controls are in that. No, no, they are separate then. Okay. Or at least they should be. Try moving them out just in case. Nope. I'm gonna take it out of the center mass control just for a bit. Let's see what happens. Nope. And then if I rotate, let's see what happens here. Right. Move that back in there. These two curves I'm going to move outside for now, just to see, and I would expect it to... Oh, okay, okay. Move that forward, and we see how the bones are left behind because they don't... Uh... That's a little strange actually, they shouldn't be left behind if... Oh wait. Yeah, so the clusters here uh, stay the same position, but then when I move this round, um, it's manipulating the uh, bone here. Right. Okay. Okay. I think I have some idea what's going on now. Okay, so let's just move her back first before I do this.
Current that back in there. And I'm gonna move this, it should go nuts. Yep. Okay. And then if I look at back the uh there should be a control here that when I move like it controls the cluster there. So that cluster cluster group back ribbon should be the first one. And I'm just gonna check for the parenting on that. Yep, that's just one. Okay, it's just controlled by center mass. Because that should be controlling the base of the uh, curve, like that. So when I move this control, or if I move the move, oops. Hmm. Control, this control doesn't have any problem with that, but global scale does. Even though global scale shouldn't move. I'm just going to try scaling it as well while I'm there. It won't do anything. Well, I'll see it. Uh, right, okay, okay. Yes, yes, I think I see. So, this uh, has roll and twist. But we haven't put any roll and twist on here. Uh, it might be worth doing that, actually. But we'll consider that kind of low priority. Because clearly when this moves... This uh, is bound by uh, the connection editor to uh, this control. Reload this. All right. So the translate here, or at least it's supposed to. Is it that one? Or is it this one? Oh, thank you. Yeah, so translate here, rotate here. Yep. So those two. I'm moved by this. This global scale, however, should be only bound by... Ooh, what the heck's going on there? Does it translate there? That shouldn't be there. Let's look at this. Oh, no, no, no. When it's um, highlighted like that, that shouldn't be the case. That should be... Yeah, scale is linked to scale here. Rotate is not linked. Translate is not linked, so... So it shouldn't be moving that, but for whatever reason, it is. Right, so IK handles here are being moved by this control. So like when this global scale is moving, it's also moving the IKs. But the IK on this spline, um, well, for the spine isn't affected, but it is affected for these two trails. So clearly there's a setting um there's either a setting or a parenting that's going on that is causing this to uh move and okay so i suppose there's like perhaps if we try taking away inherits transform just for a bit just to see what that does. Help. Oh. Okay. That back on. So perhaps what we can do is that we can parent it. We basically move it here just to see. Okay. If I move the center mass, does it move it by double? No. I move control here. Does it move it? No. Oh, the joys of problem solving. When I move this, which should not be moved. Seems a bit strange that it is moving. Hmm. 
Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. That's the ribbon trail. My bad. <laughs> Alright, move that back. There you go. <laughs> I tried, like, disabling the Inherits Transform on that, actually. Then go here and then try and move it. Nope, still does. So weird. I've done it correctly for this one, I just didn't do it correctly apparently for the other one. Yeah, these two are working fine. Alright, so what that tells me then is what is the relationship here? So probably, yep, it's those two. They're in their own group, they're in... They're in there, okay. But then, uh... For the... Uh... Actual ribbon, they're not in their own group. Right, so the... And there... So what I guess we'll try is if we try grouping with these two. Just to see what happens. Nope. We also just need to check what is actually being manipulated here. So in this case, ah, oh my gosh, I was so dumb. I'm, I'm so dumb. I've just realized what it is. I've just realized what it is, I think. Did I? Oh no, I can't see a double. I can't see a parent on there, actually. I see the skin cluster, but I don't see the, um... Yeah, there's no um, constraint that's parenting two. Oh, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> I thought that I had done something like that, but apparently that's not yet actually. That's weird. Yeah, that's a bit weird because only the uh, geometry moves. So if we just move her forward again, right? I'm just looking here for any objects that are here, and I can't see any. Um, so then. Oh, I think I know what it is. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see now. I think I do. So, because this is bound by a skin cluster, um, rather than, like, parenting, it needs to then come out from here uh, and be moved elsewhere, because it's being moved by this uh, parenting, like, it's, it's underneath this global scale, maybe? So if I scale it, now it goes slightly more nuts, okay. So if we take it out uh, of Testio and outside of global scale, so move it here, right? or maybe over, over here for now, right? Now if we try moving it, what happens, right? Yep, so we see that it moves, okay. And then if we scale it, what happens? Ah, yes, there we go. Yes, 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 there we go. So that's why. Uh, because um, this geometry is bound by a skin cluster, um, the, the scale and the uh, translation and rotation of all these vertices are controlled by the skin cluster, of which is not a, uh, it's not what is known as a DAG object or um, I don't know exactly what that stands for, I can never remember. But the point being is that it's a hidden type of object that uh, controls the way that this geometry is bound to uh, some joints. And because the scale and movement are already controlled by that, they no longer need to be parented underneath this uh, base geometry sort of node. Like, this test geo mode does not need to... Like, they don't need to be under this anymore because they're not being moved by, uh, like, parenting control. Like, basically, they don't need to be moved by uh, the group above it. You know, they just simply can just be bound to the actual, like, character uh, part, right? So when you move the character part here, because um, it's underneath 
right so this s ribbon is underneath this grouping it will result in a double transform so you're not supposed to move it that way and instead you would use the actual movement control that is made for this so that it all moves correctly right <laughs> okay uh i'm gonna just group that oops yeah group that underneath this and call it like skin ge like geometry i guess and just to put, just to make things really clear i'll just put test right because this is all being tested so that's fine okay brilliant so with that we can now start actually binding some hair on and making controls for that streaming is a wonderful thing it forces you to learn things on the fly <laughs> okay so best yo did i accidentally move this did i accidentally move that out actually i must have done yes i did put it back there you go <laughs> There we are. So when we scale it, yep, all working absolutely fine. Brilliant. All right, then. So we've got that there. Skin Geo test. Um, LP in front of that as well. Right, actually, yeah. Back here. LP skins Geo test. There you go. All right. So, now what we're going to do is actually start binding on some uh, hair movement uh, controls, really. So, it's just the exact same process that we're going to use with this trail here and this ribbon. The only difference is that this ribbon control has some uh, scaling on it. So, you can actually drag it out much further if you need, if, if need be. Um, which can work really well with creating, like, you know, really nice curvature and stuff. Um, I am wondering if there is enough geometry to support it. Uh, right now, we've only got, like, that. I think, like, on the full uh, mesh, it may need to be, like, sort of divided a little more, uh, particularly at where the joints uh, are, so that there's a little bit more curvature. Anyways. All right, so I want to just simplify this as much as possible. So, easiest way is to just make sure that we're on the uh, like the root joint where the fringe is that we want, like the root hair joint that we want to actually change and uh, guide. So you can see that there's two uh, here. This should be proxy geometry. If it's not, we need it to be. And it is. Uh, I did do the clever thing of actually copying it all over and pasting it so that Everything that was missing now has some proxy geometry that I can play with. And if we just go here and separate that out. Okay, there we go. And in fact, we can try uh, binding this so that we can kind of control it in real time, right? So just bind that along. Yep. Not quite sure why it did that though. Not sure why it revealed the root there. There we go. That's better. All right, so I want to just select all of this stuff, and I want to just rotate it around. And you see, yes, it rotates around perfectly fine. Obviously, the root here uh, is moving with it, but that's okay. We know that by the end, this lot is going to be bound to the actual root joint. Uh, in other words, this joint here, where everything converges on. So. In fact, they all actually converge onto that. Uh, we could, to make things uh, easier, and to make, basically like demonstrate that a little bit better. Just check that it's not bound. It is. So do a bit until it isn't. Yep, keep going. There you go. Alright, so go here. Like that, there we go. It might result in some weird 
play where some of these joints end up binding to that. That would be slightly annoying, actually. Yeah, that's that's yeah. You know what? That's actually too annoying. Um, just for like you know testing a rig out. This is fine. So select this, select this, bind it again, right? And then for the bit here, we'll just you know make sure that we remember, of course, that that is going to be bound to this root bone. Otherwise, like if I had decided that I wanted to bind this geometry onto this joint, it's going to then uh, take all of these other joints into account. And, you know, when we're just trying to make a rig control, you know, just to basically say where this hair is going, that would just be kind of annoying. So that's fine. All right. And the like the simplest way of going about this that I've learned uh, is literally um, we want to just do a spline control and make a curve that follows this uh, skeletal, like these joints, and then manipulate that curve using uh, clusters. And this is so easy, uh, I find. I find that it's really, really easy. So on my EP curve here, of which I have set to uh, a curve degree of three cubic, so it's a little bit smooth, we just hold V down and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hit W on find and it should show up as an actual curve here right even though i was in isolated view um it, it did actually make the curve it's just that you couldn't see it because of the isolated view um so that's fine and i just want to make sure i'm inheriting this sort of name convention so curve there you go air fringe one and right because this is a mirrorable, uh, this is a mirrorable, mirrorable joint. Not that mirrorable is a word, but there we go. Alrighty, so next thing I want to do is just make sure my joint selection thing doesn't, like, it filters them out. So I want to be able to see the control vertices. It can be a little hard to see, actually. I wonder if I can change that. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think it's here. And then like display or something. Um, Lighters. Nope. Uh, da, 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 da. Nerbs. Nope. Oh, I wonder where that is, like the CV size. Let's have a look. On, uh, let's just quickly Google that. So my uh, CV point size. I mean, I can see them perfectly fine. It's just kind of, it would be nice if they were bigger. Always good when a forum uh, post replies back with, I don't think that's possible. I presume that then maybe it doesn't. Uh, that would be quite disappointing if it, if you couldn't. trying to see. Nope. Nope. That's unfortunate. Oh well. Well, we just have to um, deal with that. So anyway, so I've got this curve here and I'm just going to make uh, a bunch of clusters to go on this. All right. So here. And it would be nice if it went permanently into the component view, like the control vertex view. So I like the way that uh, I was taught then. So you did, like the first two of a start or end, um, you would make a cluster for, and and then every other, uh, like all of the other clusters, you then give its own 
sorry, all the other TVs should give its own cluster for. Okay, let's put that back there. All right, so pick G for cluster. Awesome. G for cluster. G for cluster. G for cluster. G for cluster. There you go. All right, nice and simple like that. So basically, all of these clusters then control individual points of this curve. And then what we do is just use a very simple pair of controllers to control it. So one part basically binds the uh, the end. Probably doesn't even need to do anything. It just has to be there so that it's parented to it. You could probably just use an invisible object even, um, whether it's a curve or not. And then the other one is going to control from the end uh the way that that hair is just gonna you know move so just want to go ahead and make sure that this is named uh, i'll grab the yep. Hang on. complete tool yeah that can be a bit weird sometimes like when it's not in the right mode oh hang on no no it's not quite in the right mode so it's like I can't see the uh, joint um, selection mode that I have hidden that's a bit weird oh no matter oops don't move that definitely don't need to move them oh it's because I was in component mode like that yeah oh, okay that's why that's how I was able to do that so easily sorry let me just sort of, like rephrase what I was just doing uh, because I just worked it out myself <laughs> So I went into component mode with an F8 and it basically like prevents you from leaving the object mode. So then I was able to select each one and hit G to make the cluster. And then instead of having to then select the object and then go into component mode again, I was able to just select uh, the CV just by drag selecting. The problem of course is that if you didn't don't realize that you're still in component mode, you then can't leave it unless you hit F8 again. Uh, that was the bit that weirded me out. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways. Right, so need my joint selection back. There we are. I just want this. Get my joint selection back off. And while I'm there, take curves off. Right, so now I can just select the uh, cluster part. Now I go cluster hair fringe 11R, one, one, right? So um, this naming scheme is literally just what it is in terms of like the object uh although if like if it's fairly obvious it doesn't really need it um so like we know what polygons look like you know the icon for polygons is very obvious so i don't mind that uh just saying you know hair fringed one or whatever uh but if it's something like this it's a little bit more obscure like a cluster then yeah i'll say what it is uh basically things that aren't just polygons so cluster, hair, right? So that's where it belongs to. Fringe, it's literally, you know, the fringe part as opposed to, say, the back. And then... Ready? Oh, yeah. And then one, so it's the first fringe. Underscore one, so it's literally the first uh, joint of that fringe or first part. And then on the very end suffix that I have is always left or right. I just find that easier uh, for... Things like uh, renaming, so is it a lot easier to be able to say underscore R and then capital R as opposed to say like having it in the center where then it can be misconstrued, like it can be uh, mistaken for something else. Sorry. Anyway, so there's the first one. Right, go ahead. Air fringe two, three. Four, five, six, seven. There we go. All right. So now all of this uh, will control a curve. All right. So now what we need to do is just make some curves to control this thing. So very simple. So it's just the case of this uh, circle. This circle, by the way, isn't super necessary. It's just that um, like, I just like that it's a curve. 
applied the proxy charge heat. I just like that it's a, you know, relatively easy to see object. Well, I say easy to see object. I mean more like that. Um, I know what I'm looking for when I uh, position this thing. Right, so there we are. Freeze transformations. Un like build the history by going Alt Shift D. Uh, and there we are. So that's that there. This is just going to serve as like a reference point for this route. The reality is that you're not really going to move it. Um, there's no point in moving it. So we can probably just lock a lot of this stuff. <laughs> Oh, I've got my curves off. That's why. Yeah. Now I can just lock uh, this lot, actually. So we lock that. In fact, lock the scale, too. There you go. Although, that being said, I need to copy this for every single other one of these. So maybe locking it right now wasn't the smartest of ideas. <laughs> Unlock. Besides that, I need to duplicate this for the end anyway. Alright, there we go. Duplicate it, throw it on the end, and we'll just give it a little bit of a shaping while we're here. Although, I am I've just realised that I might need to rotate this. <laughs> and I've gone and rotated it and freeze it, froze its transform, so that was done. There you go, back over. Make a new circle. Back over. Snap it there, that's fine. Uh, yeah, freeze that. Uh, 90 on... Yep, 90 on X. And then just to indicate that it's like hair, I'm just gonna go ahead and like stretch this out a bit. Scale it like that. Shrink that. Shrink that in. Something like that, right? So that just sort of indicates that it's a pointer to me, right? There you go. Okay. Freeze that. So we can call this like the um the curve airframe or oh, no 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 control control air fringe one underscore like root underscore r there you go and then the end one will go hair fringe one underscore uh, end. Ah, oh, there you go. It can be a little lengthy when there's like this many of them, but the actual process is the actual process itself is very easy, so it's not too bad. Um, so grab this, throw that there. Plus the hair fringe one underscore group. There you go. Well, I probably should have underscore R there on that. There we go. And then these three controls. So this is the curve. This is the root. This is the end. We're just going to grab all them. And control underscore hair fringe one underscore R. Right, so there's my controls. There's the clusters. In fact, you can group those two together if you... Oh no, maybe not, maybe not. That depends on the way that the uh, clusters behave. Just check that it's got um, relative on. Yep, there we go. It should be the on by default, really. All right, so this bit is where we just then start parenting all of the clusters to these two uh, controls. So I just want to go ahead and 
select these two controls. Actually, if I just do that. Yeah, there we go. Just select the two groups, isolate, and now I can actually manipulate uh, that. It would be quite good, however, if the curve wasn't selected, though. There you go. That's a little bit better. So now I just see my clusters and my controls. So this bit is super easy. Just make sure that's on there. Yep, control rotate. And selecting this first, then the cluster. Constrainer, constrained. No, no, no. Constrained, constrainer. Oh, again. No? Wait. Yes, it is the constrainer last. I always forget sometimes. So now when I do that, yep, that moves that one 100%. Right? So the start and the end should 100% control the... Uh, I did it wrong. <laughs> yep. So, constrain, uh, constrained. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes I still forget. But either way, right? The start and the end should obviously move the uh, end cluster like 100%. And then what you get here is a gradation between um, the start point and the end point right, in terms of how they control it. So, one, two, three, right? Hit, hit. G. So now that's parented, as it should be, yes. So now when I move this, it moves uh, the cluster. But it moves it at currently half the rate that this cluster moves it. So if I move this one, it moves it at half the rate, right? So when you look at the weighting on the uh, channel editor, and you see that both of these have a weight of 1. Now obviously... Um, these two numbers should really be adding to one, but obviously they don't because they're just literally on full bore. So, like, if this was the only joint, you just put 0.5 for both so that they moved sensibly. But, because obviously this is not the only joint, you then need to make a judgment as to how much uh, these controls should move this particular cluster. So, this cluster from end to start. So, this is like... If we imagine like a sort of progress bar, this is almost like what, maybe 90% of the way. You can either do this by percentages in terms of progress or percentages in terms of where, how many there actually are. In this case, there's one, two, three, four, five of these, right? You could probably do 20% on this. So end should move this at 80% and the start should move it maybe 20%, right? So now when you move it, this should be moved much more by the end than it is by the start. And of course you could scale that, you know, as to what kind of effect you want. But just bearing in mind that this end cluster is being moved 100%. So if you have a, uh, a stretchy bone, this, you have to bear that in mind. Anyways. Fun part. Okay. So we're going to say, like, let's do this at uh, something slightly more sensible. So this is 100%, and if we just sort of like guesstimate uh, how how far along this is along the curve, this is like, what, well, maybe 90% or uh, 85%, so we'll say 85, and conversely of course we have to change this to 15 so that they both add up to 1, or 100%. Now then, we're just going to quickly go through and parent all of this stuff, so I'm just going to hit add parent there, alright, there we go. And go about my merry way of doing that uh, very quickly. I like Maya's um, G key. It's easily the best thing about it. Um, okay. So. Get my uh, channel view back on. So this is like, if this is 85, then this is probably about 80. So 0 0.8, 0 0.2, right? This looks about halfway. So maybe this is a bad estimation and that maybe this should be if this is 80 then 75 5 perhaps maybe i was right the first time but again you could scale it the way that any way that you wanted to it's not maybe not like that though okay. 0 0.75 0 0.125 Right, so that's more like maybe like 0 0.55 or something, I guess. 0.55, 0 
And then as we start getting more towards the top, uh, perhaps like the way that this should curve out is that it starts getting really, really strong, right? Not just obviously here, but maybe over here as well. So, like, so this is uh, five five on end. Whoops. The only other problem is that like you just have to be slightly careful of the way that it's going end and root, because I think it goes in alphabetical order after your um, base channels. So. This part is going end and then root because E is obviously before R. So, well, it is in the English language. <laughs> uh, so, 5545 five, five, end here, uh, say 40, maybe. 2.40, 0 0.5, no, 6, Evo. Europe. And then this one, 0 0.2 perhaps for the end and 0 0.8. Right, so now when I move this, right, see that it is such like stretching like that. And then when I move this, the end point, like the points that are close to the root, are move more than the points on the uh, end. Right then, so now when we reflect this here, when we see the curve, yep, that's fine. So why did I go over and make this curve, right? Why did I do all of that? Well, the cool thing is that you don't like but the default option for the spline IK is that it goes and makes the curve for you but because we want to be able to manipulate the curve you know uh, in a bit more detail than that we've got to make a cluster basically for every joint um, so at any point we could add a whole bunch more controls if we really wanted to um, to be able to control like the way that it bent but because you know we don't really need that so right now but we just select yeah just make sure that these two are isolated so now we can assign this curve to become the curve for the spline ik for this series of joints so go ahead to our uh spline ik uh handle tool and these controls here root on curve auto parent curve Snap curve to root, auto create, all of this stuff we just don't need. And the only one they're interested in is root on curve. So, and because we know that we've created this curve from the start to the finish, this is definitely the start. So, just go ahead and say this is our start, this is the end, right? So, you see how every, all of the joints turn white. So, now it's time to select the curve. This is what the third uh, click is for. So, this now selects the curve. And bang, we now have uh, an IK uh, spline handler that can that is going to control this curve. And now, if we go ahead and show it, oops, need the joints too. Let me just select those two and also the joint. There we go, that's better. So now, when we select the end point. Now the joints are manipulated, right, according to the curve, which is great. Now we can do that, and then if we rotate it, it rotates the uh, curve as well. So in terms of, like, our controls, I think that's pretty much all that we need. Uh, we could have a mid-range control as well, just to be able to control that a little more, but I think that that's probably fine. So now that we've got that, um, if we select this uh, hair geometry that we're affecting as well, oops, Make sure it's actually selected. There we go. And we manipulate that. And now we see if we just ignore this part, right? The only thing that we're interested in is this. So we manipulate this. We can manipulate the hair accordingly. Right? And when we look quite, you know, not too close up, it's pretty fine. If obviously if you go like, you know, like super close, right, then you're gonna see every single polygon, right? But that's fine. So there we have that. The only question is, this endpoint here isn't really affected. This is a slight problem um, because it would be nice for the endpoint to be able to be affected. I mean, we have the joint, uh, so it would be nice if it did. So perhaps the easiest way, um, and hoping that it doesn't turn into a double transform, we can try, is to go ahead and throw an orient constraint on it. Uh, maybe not like 
that exactly, but let's just try this, right? So now that I've got this and I rotate it along, does it change anything? If I go ahead and I throw that over here. I'm just going to try rotating it around. No, it doesn't really produce a result that I like. Just go back here and kill that. Could try parenting it. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't quite work. Um, but it would be nice if it was uh, doing it properly. In which case, we'll just bear that a mind as a lesson for next time that we could have just ended the uh, IK spline over here. But then when we go to make the, uh, the skeleton that's going to be uh, basically emulating this, we would then only copy up to here. So let's just make sure that we've done that. Constrainer, constrained. Yep, there you go. So now when I rotate this along, when if I try moving it, right, and rotate it, changes. Yep. And it does work. Okay, cool. Not sure if it was working with the orient constraint, but I don't know. Maybe it, like using the parent constraint just seems to make more sense sometimes. Now the only problem with this is that maybe this isn't enough if we want to do like particularly elaborate um, hair movements. But for for this, I think it's okay. I think it'll be all right. It's not exactly like too much work to add in the uh, third control anyway, if we really want to. But I want to try and make um, hair movements like this as automatic as possible. I really want to make sure that um, <clears throat> when I go to pose this thing... Mm, sorry, <clears throat> my throat is drying up. When I go to pose this thing, um, that I want to only really be ma manipulating one control if, if possible. Um, rather than having to like, if I move this and then I move this, do I then need to go over and manipulate some third control over here? I reserve that for something like this where, you know, the curvature of a ribbon trail is really important. But for stuff like this where there's just so much hair, um, <clears throat> probably not necessary. So, um, it's not like the fastest process in the world. I think I could probably do it faster. Um, but... It's a cool process nonetheless. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make make this for all of the fringe uh, stuff off stream. And what I'm going to do is do this for every uh, strand here so that I can control all of the uh, uh, the hair, basically. All right. Then I'm going to do the same for this skirt. And it's going to be real fun because um, skirt manipulation is interesting. I think we'll show the result of that like when we get there which hopefully shouldn't take too long it's just a busy work process now but <clears throat> i'm glad i was able to like learn this soon so that i could uh cover it actually <clears throat> sorry <coughs> anyway uh, my throat's going now so uh i think we can leave it there so if you have any like uh questions or uh anything just feel free to leave them in the comments uh, what I'm going to do is off stream, I'm going to go ahead and do all of this and then the next stream should be uh, basically just showing the result of, of that and then moving into the actual uh, soft skinning so that then we can actually start going from, you know, like a bunch of proxy meshes to full on that. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Anyways. Alrighty, so thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and thank you, thank you for your uh, comments, <laughs> and I'll see you the next time. Thank you so much. Bye bye.